Judges chapter number 16 and verse 21. Judges chapter 16, verse 21. I'm going to say on behalf of me and my family, thank you so much for allowing us to be here. I want to thank the pastor. I pastored churches over a span of 25 years, three different churches. One thing I can tell you, I was very peculiar on who stood in my pulpit, especially on Sunday morning. Yeah. And doubly, especially if I was God. Yeah. I don't take it lightly that the pastor has allowed me this opportunity to be here. Thank you for your kindness and the reception of me and my family. And I'm going to say this I want to thank God. He's with us here. Hey, hey, hey. I don't think the oath of staff and the two or three together is yes. yes. he here. And I'm talking about that manifest hey, hey. I don't know about you, but hey. somebody down on the inside of here uh, has a squeeze at me right now. Hey. Hey. I'm not saved by fear. Yeah. I'm hey. saved by grace. Hey. 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 But I act such a big God living down on the inside of me. Every once in a while, I like feel it. Hey, hey. And I don't know about you, but I'm feeling my yeah. saved. Hey, hey. I want to thank God for allowing me yeah. privilege just to be where God. And I don't make it light. I'm just sort of country boy, yeah. Yeah, country boy, saving. I like it when God gets to take it around. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. He ain't kicking around in your soul. There's no words out of He's doing something in mine. Yeah. I praise him for it. Thank you. And I always tell churches, don't let anybody mess that up. I know you work hard, pray hard, and live right and follow God and make sense of us and down. For church to be like this yeah. when you come. Don't let anybody come in here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I used to say when I pass you, come try to mess this up. And I got some fellas, we'll help you find your car yeah. and the way back to your yeah. bag. Yeah. But I won't put up with it. Yeah. Yeah. I just thank you so much. I thank the Lord so much. I pray that God will speak to us today yeah. right. from His Word. Judges chapter number 16 and verse number 21. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to God and bound him with feathers of brass and he did grind in the prison house. Of course, if you're familiar with your Bible, we are in the book of Judges. We're speaking of the seventh judge in that book by the name of Samson. We like to give Samson a fit, but don't ever forget, Samson was a man chosen by God. God Himself visited his mother and father and told them about Samson. He was chosen by God. He was not only chosen by God, but he had a covenant with God. He was a Nazarite from his mother's womb. And the outward manifestation or token of that covenant was that a razor would never come up upon his head. He was chosen by God. He was in a covenant with God. And he was a champion of for God. The Danites looked up and said, hey, that's our brother Saxon. And Israel said, if you mess with us, you'll have to mess with Saxon. And he was a champion. But Saxon had two problems in his life. First of all, Saxon liked to hang out with the wrong crowd. He didn't like to hang around with his brethren. Let me just stop you long enough to tell you, you can run with that crowd in the world if you want to. But if they're not trying to get you closer to the Lord, if they're not trying to help you to find Jesus, they are not your friend. And eventually it will come back and bite you. Saxon liked to run around with the wrong crowd. And Saxon had a compromise problem. Now we wouldn't call it compromise in our day, but Saxon did the compromise that is killing Christianity and the, and the power of the church in our day. See, Saxon wanted to do God's will, but he wanted to do it Saxon's way. And if we're not uh, uh, careful, you and I say we're trying to do God's will and we'll be trying to do it our way. But partial obedience is total disobedience. And one day Saxon compromising and being with the wrong crowd lays his head up in the wrong lap and tells his heart to the wrong person. Let me just go ahead and stop right here and tell you, you be real careful who you share everything with. Everybody ain't trying to help you. And he lays his head in the lion's lap and takes them out. Say, 
sound like a lot of us preachers got our head laying in the wrong lap, told her all our heart, uh, and we're taking a nap. And she takes and shaves, uh, or has them shave uh, his head. Uh, that last leg that that covenant with God uh, stood on, he became like any other man. The worst verse in all this story is when she said, Saxon, the blessing girl upon you. He leaps up, shook himself, and risked up. And he didn't have any idea that the Spirit of God wouldn't know me. Oh, God help us to never come to the place to know he had done God's will his way so long that when God wouldn't even know him, he didn't even know it. And they take him. And the first thing they that sin will do, that compromise will do, they did to him. They put out his ass. See it being in the wrong crowd, being in the wrong place, it will blind you. And then they bound him with feathers of brass. Those things that used to break, like sewing thread, has now got him tied up. Let me say to you, you better not get too complacent. You better not get too uh, at ease inside. Or the very things that have given you no trouble now will be the very things that the yeah. devil will right. bind you up with. He's blind. He's bound. They're belittling him. He's down there at the prison house, hooked up like an old mule or donkey. And he's grinding in the prison house. It's, let me just say it like this Saxon is in a mess. Oh, yeah. Now, Saxon's mess was of his own making. Yep. Yeah. Every mess you and I get into is not of our own making. Wow. Our country's in a mess. I didn't mess it up. Our cities and counties are in a mess. Some of our churches are in a mess. Sometimes God makes a mess come in your life. And from this mess, Saxon's in, we'll find out what God will do. In a mess. In a few minutes, I want to preach on this thought. What God will give you in a mess. What God will give you when you're in a mess. Look at him now. He's blinded. He's bound with feathers of prayer. And he's grinding at that prison house. But let's continue on with the story. The first thing I think God will give you when you're in a mess is God will give you grace. Look at verse number 22. How be it? How be it? I see God's grace in that little word, how be it. What it tells me about God's grace is God's grace was still acting. Though Saxon had failed. Though Saxon had been in the wrong crowd. Though Saxon had compromised. Though Saxon didn't look like a champion. And he looked defeated. And he was blinded. And he was bound. Did it stop the grace of God from still working in Saxon's life? I don't know where you are this morning. I don't know God is still active in Saxon's yeah. life. Amen. What's this now? Verse 22. He said, how be it the hair? Yeah. You know what that hair symbolizes? It symbolizes that covenant that he had with God. The hair on his head began to grow back. I can almost imagine Saxon down there grinding at that wheel. Said, woe is me. Life's over. I've thrown it all away. I've messed it all up. And here I am. God has forgotten me and God will fail to come to my rescue. And all of a sudden, a little that hair tickled him on the ear. And he said, wait just a minute. What was that? And he reached up and fell. And he said, wait a minute. I had a covenant with God. And God's grace came and nudged old Saxon in the soul and said, God ain't forgot you. And God will not fail you. The hair began to grow. It showed Saxon, or it assured Saxon of what God will do. I don't know about you. I've been in a mess or two, and I can testify this morning. God has never forgotten me. And God has never failed me. Right in the middle of your mess, God will send you something that reminds you that standing somewhere in the shadows. It may not be Saxon couldn't find him. Saxon couldn't see him. Saxon couldn't feel him. Had no idea where God was. And God knew something was sitting in your own hair. The people Saxon in the right place. And every time he reached up and felt that hair. Thank God God said, I have forgot you. And I will not fail you. The grace of God is still Not only will God give you grace. 
thank God for grace. Amen. Thank God for that unmerited, unreserved favor. Yep. If anybody ought to have been put to death and put on a shelf and never used again, it should be sacked. All in gifts, and he never used them for what God gave them to him for. Mm. He ought to just throw him away. Mm. But not God. Hey. Yeah. Right in the middle of his mess, God said, I thought God just dumped a bunch of them. Hey, I just thought God be good to him anyway. God, let me just say, I ain't got no sad songs to sing. I ain't going to tell no sad story. Yeah. All I'm going to say is thank God for his grace. Hey. He's been good yeah. to this old boy. Hey. As we continue on, secondly, we'll say right in the middle of your mess, God will give you a goal. A goal. Something to reach for. Something to accomplish. Watch it in verse number 25. The Bible said it came to pass. I'm going to stop right there and tell you this. I don't know what you're going through. God didn't see it to stay. Yeah. I thank God it's, it came to pass. Yeah. This is not the end. You won't be where you are all along uh, 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 for the rest of your life. God told Samson, and said, you're in a bad spot. You're in a mess. But my grace is showing up every inch that hair grew. But Saxon was assured of God's grace. And God said, just hold on, boy. You may have to grind at this wheel. You may be spit upon and slapped around by the enemy. You may have a rough time for a while. But it came to pass. It ain't always going to be like it is. And I thank God the best is still yet to come. God the best is out in front of Samson no, yeah. with his eyes plucked out, bound in fetters and chain, like any other man didn't make fun of. Doesn't look like the best is yet to come. You may be in a mess this morning. You may think it's over, and God will oh. help get me out of this to do anything. Yeah, but I got good news today. God's got yeah. you back right where you are. He's got a goal for you, yeah. and until He gets you there, you're not going to stay here forever. Yeah. When their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson. Ain't it drunk? They said, Call for Samson that he may make a sport. We make fun of him to live. They called for Samson out of the prison house. Ain't it amazing how they got him in the prison house? Got him locked up. They should have left him there. Yeah. They should have just left him there. But the grace of God said, Get drunk. Yeah. And go down there and get him out of prison. You may feel like you locked up in some kind of prison this morning. Don't be amazed if it's the devil that comes down and gets you out. Just because God said uh, the devil brings it doesn't mean God sends it. Let me put it this way. Samson can accomplish God's will down at the prison house. He's got to get to that place God has for him. That's the Coliseum between them two pillars. And somebody's got to get him out. Oh God! Send the earthquake! Send the Holy Ghost! Send some kind of lightning bolt and get me out of this prison. No, the very ones that put him there. And had him chained up. And had him do it. I don't know if that's a happen to you this morning. But it's sure enough to happen to make you know. It may be the very yeah. one that put you in a mess. It may be the very one that caused it. May the very one get you out and bring you right where God uh, has wanted Samson to be all of his life. He had a goal for Samson. It's seen in this. Let me get to the phrase. At the end of verse 25. And they set him between the pillars. He, I see Samson's goal is because God had a set place for him. In the prison house, it wasn't in the nation of Dan or in the tribe of Dan. It wasn't even at God's house. It was down there among them idol worshiping barbaric people known as the Philistines right as they worship their God they gone uh, right and sometimes God's got you in the mess because the only way you can do what God wants you to do yep. is be right in the middle yep. of a mess hey. I remember I, when I pastored I worked out I worked for a company 
called uh, nest stores, food. You see it at the grocery store. And sometimes every once in a while, it's a three man job, they put three of us Baptist preachers on that job. Man, we'd go into work that morning with a giddy up in our cell. We'd sing now. I wouldn't sing because well, I can't sing, but one of them guys could sing. And we'd come and clap and sing around with him and shout while he sang. We'd do our job. We'd sing. And we'd preach to one another. And we'd shout. And then all folks would look. So ain't that pretty much a preacher? Think they had church. I mean, we'd have church. I'd go home on the way home. I'd say, God, I don't know why you don't sit it up. For me to work with them two guys every day. The day goes by faster. I don't come home evil. I don't feel as wore out. The job don't get on the nerves of bad. If you just put me there. The next day I'd go in and guess where I'd be. I change jobs every day. I'd be with the cussingest, nastiest, vulgarest people. And I'd be three, four straight weeks of uh, day after day that crowd. I said, Lord, I sure like to be over there with them. And God told me one day, since you're the light of the world. Yeah. I don't need you running around shining the light. Yeah. Hey. People with a light. Tell shining in mind. They yeah. shine. Yeah. I don't need the light to shine. Hey. You know where the light shines the brightest? In a dark place.
high arching positions. He killed tens of thousands that day. But to you, oh Lord, this me had the strength to push. Let me just have the strength to go down there at work and this whoop him forward. It's been giving me all that trouble. And so the whole bunch of them and walk and cry. I just had that strength. That ain't God's purpose. That's how God did what his purpose was. But God's purpose was not necessary. God's will was not necessarily for Saxon to, uh, to destroy the house or to defeat the enemy. God's will for Saxon's life was for him to do God's will. Amen. Began to deliver. It didn't have nothing. Oh, yes, he pushed the house down. But that God didn't send him down there just to push the house down. God doesn't have him there just to destroy it. So, you know, listen, God don't have to do that because God said one angel killed 185 a series of 185,000 right. in one night. He'll do what he wants to. But he's got Samson down there because he wants Samson to understand my life ain't about my strength. My life ain't about how many men I can put. My life's about doing it. The will of God, your purpose in life, if you're born in chosen, called by God, in that covenant, sealed with Christ on blood, is to do push a bill down. It may be be kicked around. It may be a little wild in a mess. But wherever you are, God's goal for your life is do the will of God. Saxon's about to fulfill the will of God that he squandered for 20 years. For 20 years, Saxon's never done what God put him here to do. But in these moments, he has finally Reached his goal Amen. in life. He figures out what life is really all about. In your midst, God will give you grace. Sure. God will give you a goal. Amen. I'm going to give you one more and I'll be finished. Look at verse number 26. <coughs> and Samson said unto, I got this underlined and highlighted in my Bible, the lad. Samson said to the lad that held him by the hand. Not only will God give you grace, not only will God give you a goat, but in your mess, God will give you a guy. Oh, yeah. Time for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Just like the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It wasn't a big warrior that was leading Samson around. Right. No. Because the Holy Ghost won't speak of himself. Right. The Holy Ghost don't come. To make big of himself. Right. If the Holy Ghost is in it, he'll be real smart. Because you know who he'll come and talk about? He'll come and lift up Jesus. Hey. He'll make Jesus big. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess you could stretch it and say he's a type of the Lord at this moment. He's a type of Jesus. The lad's a type of the Holy Ghost. See who the bigger guy is? See who the champion is? The Holy Ghost just the land. I'm just the one that's holding by the hand. But I'm glad down there in the middle of Samson's mess, Sat God didn't leave him in the dark. Yeah. God didn't leave him to stumble around and fall. I'm glad he is able to keep us from falling yeah. and the gentle yeah. faultless before the throne of God. Because he sent him a guy. Watch this now. Saxon was blind. He's in a strange way. He had no idea what was all around. But the lad did. See, that he had a guy who was familiar with the surroundings. Yeah. When he did Saxon by the hand and say, Saxon, we're going to go over here and get you something to eat. He said, watch right there. There's a hole. You turn the ankle. Well, don't go too far on that side. Uh -huh. Cut a ditch right there. Yeah. Say, say, see, the guy knew. Yeah. Saxon was blind. He had no idea where he was. He didn't know what was surrounding him. He didn't know what was around him. But the lad yeah. did. And I'm here yeah. to tell you in your darkness, yeah. in your mess, you might not know what's around. Why am I? God, why are you leaving me down here? Just let the Holy Ghost get you out of hand. He knows where every trip up is. He knows where every temptation is. He knows where every problem is. He knows the path you have to take to stay on the straight and narrow. Just let the one that's familiar. Don't try to get yourself out of it. Just let your God lead you. He's familiar with the surroundings. Not only is this land familiar with the surroundings, but he's faithful in his service. Yes. He held him by the hand. Implies that he led him everywhere he went. 
He held it. It implies that he does I mean, I'm not saying he did, but it implies that he never let Saxon go. I see Saxon hooked up like a mule. It's probably right, this is the way I see it. He's hooked up like a mule down there in the grinding house. And he's going around and around and around. Grinding that wheel. Guess what that lad is doing? He's holding Saxon. Holding Saxon by the hand. He's just going around and around. You ain't in that mess all by yourself. Oh, you you know, yeah, Jesus said, if I go, uh, I'll send another comforter. Hey. He will abide with you forever. If that man's a type of the Holy Ghost, every time Saxon made a laugh around that wheel, uh, again, yeah. the Holy Ghost walked right around. He's the Bible. Now, your Bible said, the lad uh, that held him uh, by the hand. Every time Saxon went to eat, that little old boy took him over there and told him, said, Saxon, here you go. Yeah. And every time Saxon lifted his hand, uh, that little old lad had to put it in his mouth. Every time yeah. Saxon had to go somewhere, that little old lad had him by. I believe that boy spent his yeah. whole life, yeah. uh, his whole mission in life was to hold on to Saxon's hand. And he was faithful in his service. You don't find one time in his darkness, in his death, in his blindness, that Saxon tricks and falls. That Saxon doesn't get where he needs to be. Yeah. It didn't say Saxon was starving. It didn't say Saxon had strained his ankle. It didn't say Saxon had fallen in another ditch. That boy was spiteful in his service. And I say this morning, the Holy Ghost with yeah. that inside of us is spiteful. No walk every cell. To guide every way. To be with you. To hell or high water. No matter where you are. He's familiar with the surroundings. He's faithful in his service. I'll give this and I'll be finished. He had a guy that was a friend that stayed. Samson is between the pillars. And he says, Holy Ghost, put my hands up on the pillar. I don't feel them clean. Holy Ghost said, That's what I brought you here for. And he put Samson's hands up on the pillar. And that's when Saxon will battle on a moment with all of his might, he'll push the house back. But Weaver's country commentary on the King James Bible text said that when he got in position, then he said, Lord, remember me one more time. I feel the hair of the covenant. I know we're in the covenant. I don't deserve it. That little old boy said, remember me, Lord. Give him what he's asking for, Lord. When Saxon was a praying, I believe that little boy was a whole Saxon by the hand. And I pray, give it to him, Lord, and let him one more time. And Saxon maybe felt the shook himself and felt the Spirit of God on him. And he leans over and he tells that little boy and said, You better get out of here, son. Because I'm fixing to push this building down. Everybody in here is going to die. And that old boy looked at him and said, You read your Bible. If you find any word that says that boy left, you show it to me. It never says that lad. The only thing it says that lad did was held him by the hand. Yeah. And I believe he's got his hands on that pillar. Yeah. And that lad preaching up there got a hold of Saxon's hand. And Saxon said, little lad, uh, you better get out of here. I'm fixing to push this building down. I feel the power of God. Uh, I'm going to push this building down. Everybody in here is going to die. Oh, and that little old boy said, Saxon, go ahead and push it down. That's what God's got you down here for. But I ain't going to leave it. Yeah. And when you leave, uh, I'm going to leave. I ain't leaving without you. Yeah. Catch up with me. Yeah. He said, I ain't leaving yeah. without you. Let me just tell you this. As long as the Holy Ghost is in this world, uh, there'll be a church in this Amen. world. Amen. And Amen. the church, they said, oh, the church is going under. Yes, the church ain't going under, friend. She's a going under.
me show you what I think I can do. Zach just said, all right. Yeah. The Bible said for the first time in Samson's 20 years, he bowed himself. Mm. And with all his might, I don't think Samson had ever had to use all his might to look at God. But with all his might, and I see that little boy, got his hand on Samson. Push it, big man, push it. You can do it. God's with you. Keep pushing. And he's a pushing with it. Push. I got this side, Samson. Push the other side. Keep pushing. The crowds are laughing. Look at old black man up, Samson. He thinks he's still the man he used to be. They're jeering and cursing and belittling Samson. And that little lad probably said, don't listen to him, big man. Don't listen to him. We're right in the center of God's wheel. We're doing what God's got us down here to do. Just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. You can do it. You can do it. I tell you when the world's will make it fun of us. When they're trying to shut the church down. When they're running tired. When they come against I'm glad. I've got a guy on the inside of me. Just keep on singing. Keep on preaching. Keep on believing. Keep on praying. Just keep pushing. Give it all you got. Give it all you got, Samson. I hear her giving. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. We're almost home. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. And all of a sudden, she begins to come down. And I believe in the final moments. The little lad looked back at Samson and said, Well done. Yeah. 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 I don't know where you are. Yeah, man. You say, preacher, I'm in a mess. You wouldn't believe the mess I'm in. Maybe of your own making. May not. But I tell you this. When you're in a mess, God will give you grace. Yeah. Yeah. God will give you a goal. Amen. And God will give you a Amen. Just balance. Amen. And push with all your Hey. We're all those. We're all those. And in one moment, Saxon did for God what God chose him to cause him to do. What he couldn't get done in 20 years. It may be the mess that gets us to a fulfill God will in our life. God, he said, push with all your might. We're almost. Yeah. Yeah, Let's bow for prayer. Father, thank you for your grace, our goal, and God, even in this mix for you. God, I pray that we're right now. We'll come by ourselves. Feel the covenant again of His blood. Say, I'm one of God's children. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to push with all my mind. I'm going to give it everything I got. But we're almost finished. We're almost home. And when I get there, you'll be able to look and say, Well done. Father, I pray you speak to our heart. Take the truth of your word, the power of your spirit, the people that for thy servant. You did for thy Well, praise you for Jesus' sake. For God's name. Amen. For you to miss. Thanks, thank you all right in your life. How is it? Maybe say, preacher, I ain't never been saved, never been born again. I'm in a mess. I sure thank you for the grace of Almighty God. Hey. That will help you. It's for by grace are you saved, and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not a word, lest any man should boast. Do you know the Lord this morning? Do you know the Lord? Hey, you may be, may, may be away from the Lord. You may stray in your life. You know that you say, but you stray. Boy, you're in a mess. Like that prodigal son, you done found yourself in a hog pen. You done found yourself in slop all over your life. Mess and just nastiness in your life. It says down there in, in Luke 15 that he came to himself. And he said this in these words, in, in these sort of words, he said, How much more better than the servants of a father's house had than I got? Now paraphrase this, read Luke 15 when you get home. 
He dropped them the, 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 the hush that he would be when he, he went back to the house. I sure am thankful for a father that accepted him in his mess. Amen. Hey, you're in the best today. There's a father. We said, my heavenly, my, my earthly father don't love me. My mama's disowned me. My brothers and families have turned it back on me. If you're a child of God, it's a heavenly father. Hey. That's waiting. He's waiting to put a robe on you. Ain't got the fatted calf. We'll put a ring on you. He'll accept you back in. Hey, would you come this morning? You may be in a mess. You may be. Hey, Samson got himself in a mess. But I sure am glad there's a God in heaven. As you play, you may be in your pew. You may come back on your pew and, and, and not come down. That's fine. New business for God. Maybe there's somebody in your heart. A, a father. A mother. They may be a brother or sister. Hey, you're, hey you, you may have somebody you know to see the man you can pray for. That'd be all right. Be all right. See, be, be right with God. I, I'm teaching this morning out of Amos chapter 4, verse number 12. Oh, prepare to meet thy God. Are you prepared today? If the Lord would come back, would you be prepared to meet Him? Bless your place. Hey, maybe we just, just take a little moment right here. Amen. There's some praying in the altar, some praying in their pews. Well, may God ever help us. God ever help us. Oh, Holy Ghost. Somebody to pray with you. Need somebody to pray with you. Grab that person. Lady, if you're late, grab the lady and come down the altar and pray. If you're a man, grab a man, come down for it. Watch her fight, lady, that little lad. Glad there's a friend. Kind of stick her closer than a brother. Hey. Glad that lad was with me. I sure fight before a while, amen. All this were hand in hand. Why, maybe as we walk through this life again, or oh, she's there to help us. May have a good friend. Need somebody there to save us. Walk with you. Talk with you. Fellowship with you. Some pray to the altar. Some pray to the people. I hope everybody's all right. I'm all right. Pretty good. Break through another verse. Give me some time to pray. Thank God help us. Thank God help us. You never know what Tommy Hayes says this a lot. You never know what one It may be this time that you pray today that you get to your best. God helps you. God helps you to defeat what's bad. We got a lot of things in Bob to say. We got a lot of things in Bob to say. May God help us. We won't play that. We still got the Lord. We're all over here to help us pray. We all got to see this. Give everybody plenty enough time. Are you lost? Hey, you know you saved today? No
appreciate the Lord. I'm glad to come by our way this morning. I'm glad God he can work in a mysterious way. I sure thank you for just working our heart today. It's good to be here. Thank you for coming. Had a good number out today. May God bless you for being here. Be much in prayer for the service tonight. We'll have a 6 o'clock service online. They've been just tuned into Facebook. They've been Victory Baptist Church of Eastlake. And uh, that service will start at 6 o'clock. Find your place at home. Get your Bible out. And get along in the service they've been. We'll have that tonight at 6. We'll be back right here in the service. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here in Sanctuary. Y'all pray one for another. Trust all hearts and minds are clear. They are. We'll be dismissed. And then we'll fellowship one with another. Tell the preacher hello, amen. And uh, she appreciate the message. Amen. Fellowship him and his family. Okay? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And ask God to help us. God knows exactly. Hope send me. Brother Jeff, you can dismiss us in prayer. Lord, we love you. God, we thank you for your man. Yeah.